What's up, Christ-centered mental health community? This is me, David Lee Chu Sarche. I represent Christ-centered mental health, a ministry where I talk about mental health awareness from a Christian perspective in order to give you real hope in Jesus' name to the glory of God the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, before I get started on this video, I want to make a quick announcement about um, this, this, for those of you that are new to my channel, this, this channel does have a Facebook group called Christ-Centered Mental Health Discussion Group. For those of you, for those of you who are subscribed, who want to interact with other subscribers and, um, interact with me and give me content ideas, you can join the group on Facebook, or you can also like and follow the page, the Facebook page called Christ Center Mental Health Discussion page that's on Facebook, and so you can like and follow that, and it's, it serves the same purpose. Um, the links to both of these will be in the description box below. Alright, so um, this is going to be part two of my video series that I just started on this book right here blame it on the brain by ed dr ed welch i'll be going over chapter one um for those of you that don't know who ed welch is like oh hold on he's a nuthetic counselor or biblical counselor and the reason why i started this series is because i've been told by people like after i did my series where I critique Jay Adams' book, Competent to Counsel. I've been told that Jay Adams is um, pretty much outdated and that biblical counseling has come a long way since the time of Jay Adams. So I've been told, I've, because of that, I've been told that I need to read something more modern, a, mo a more modern representation of biblical counseling. So I decided to get this book. Um, as because this is a more modern representation of biblical counseling and lo and behold there's still a lot of problems like yes biblical counseling has improved since the time of jay adams but there's still some problems with it and i still think it's a toxic ideology towards the mentally ill and um it's it's very harmful and uh like the thing is I, I, it needs to be exposed. Like the Apostle Paul said, we need to expose the fruit, the evil deeds of the wicked. And I do see this as a wicked um, belief system that needs to be exposed. It's not biblical. Even though they claim to be biblical, it's not biblical. It needs to be exposed. So um, if, you, if you're new to this series, please watch the first video in this series like uh, uh, there's gonna be part of a playlist so you can watch my first video where i go through the introduction and then watch this video but yeah um yeah so anyways so let me get started so chapter one is titled who's in charge and uh so the first thing again like i highlighted in yellow what I agreed with and I highlighted in orange what I disagreed with and the first thing that I agreed with that he said was um, it was on page 22 he said the truth is that all knowledge begins as Proverbs indicates with the fear of the Lord all knowledge begins by first asking what does God say how does God want us to see this this is how we study sex, money, economics, politics, and anything else worthy of careful thought. Everything in life should come under the authority of Scripture. And I do agree with this. As someone who is a presuppositionalist in my apologetic um, method, like I, I do agree with this. I think, I think everybody comes at certain. At, everybody comes at the way they look at life and their overall worldview from a certain set of presuppositions. And as a Christian, my presupposition is the authority of Scripture. So I'm going to look at everything in life from the, through the lens of Scripture. So I do agree. Like, uh, And the reason why I do this is because the Scripture is my ultimate authority. Like, I, I submit to the authority of Scripture and my reasoning and everything. Like, so, uh, so 
as someone who assimilates the authority of Scripture, I, w I look at all of life through the lens of Scripture. I think every Christian should um, do the same thing. Now, people... Like people may have a problem with that, but if you have a problem with that, my question, I, I'll, I'll tell you that you do the same exact thing with your presuppositions. You look at life and everything in life through your own presuppositions, and you presuppose your presuppositions as your standard of authority. So, yeah. All right, so I agreed with that. Um, the next thing I agreed with... Um, was on page 24. He said, In fact, to say that sickness is always a result of personal sin is actually an old heresy that goes back to Job and his counselors. So why didn't the church in the 1800s teach that sin and sickness are not necessarily related? Why didn't they encourage precise observation of life created, though fallen world, in order to mean fully understand the in order to more fully understand the epidemics, perhaps the church's theological lenses were unrefined and unable to interpret those problems meaningfully. So, I I do agree with this. Like, and it's interesting that he puts this out, puts this out there because one of the core tenets of nuthetic counseling is that mental illnesses is the result of one sin or as Jay Adams has said that mental illness is just pretty much a cover-up for one sin so it's interesting that he says this like and it'll be it'll be kind of I'm kind of curious as to how he um unpacks that in the later chapters but yeah it's it, 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 uh, it's it's kind of it is it is really interesting all right, so on the very next page, on page 25, um, I disagreed with this, like, and it's, it, this is a pretty long passage, but I'm just going to read it. Um, it says, drinking to intoxication is now called a disease that comes from the body, not the soul. If you were to suggest that sin causes drunkenness, you would be greeted in the same way that moderns might greet... Hold on might greet Stratos of Lapsakos and his eyebrow theory, you would be a curious but irrelevant voice from the past. Let's say that a pastor is counseling a female parishioner who is very depressed for years. They struggle together, confident that there is that there are no biblical answers to her depression. Then a neighbor of the depressed person happens to mention her own experience with antidepressant medication. The depressed woman goes to her mother's psychiatrist, starts taking medication, and her depression lifts. There is no question that this woman will consider the brain scientist to be more insightful and authoritative regarding the, her problem than the Bible. She has tried both, and medication was more effective. What about opening? What about the opening case study in the book, Listening to Prozac? It describes a man who's interested whose interest in pornography ended soon after taking that drug. Do you think that this man will ever call pornographic, pornographic indulgence sin? Clearly not. It was not spiritual change that removed his desire. It was a medication that manipulated brain chemicals. Therefore, he will argue, if the soul exists, it can be changed through prescription drugs, not preaching the gospel. All right, so the first thing I like, there's there's a couple things I want to say about this. The, the the first thing I want to address is this idea that he's suggesting that alcoholism is not a disease, and instead it's just it's just a, the result of sin. Like, it, there is good evidence out there that points to the fact that alcoholism is in fact a disease. A, a, a mental disease like I mean you can just google it and search it for yourself like I mean it's all over the place like, there's tons of studies on this like it's, it's well documented that alcoholism is a disease so I mean does this mean that alcoholism isn't isn't sin I mean, no it alcoholism is sin like 
it, it's it's a sin and it's a disease like and so i mean he's setting up a false dichotomy here um by saying that it can either be sin or it can either be a disease i say it's both like just because it's a disease a mental disease doesn't mean it's not a sin like god commands us to be sober-minded and to not get drunk so therefore if you get drunk you are sinning but it is a mental disease and so he's setting up a false dichotomy and it, and, and from what I've noticed with these biblical counselors is they're very good at setting up these false dichotomies. And if you're not careful, you can get sucked right into it if you're not really thinking about it. And like, so yeah, he sets up this false dichotomy and like, it's just, it's, it's, it's really, it's really indicative of the fact that he's ignorant when it comes to how alcoholism works and how it affects the brain and um and, and, and the thing is i was told when i first was told about ed welch was that he was very knowledgeable about brain science and how the brain works and because he studied it but this is basic information that a, a regular that anybody who studies brain science or neurology would understand so i don't understand how he doesn't get this well, um, I mean, I don't have a degree in brain science, and I understand this. But yeah. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, like, like the the whole concept of depression. Like, he sets up this false dichotomy that you can either, when it comes to depression, like, you can either um, take medication to solve your depression, or you can hear the preaching of the gospel. Why can't you hear both? Why can't you hear the gospel and also take antidepressant medication? Like this woman, like, I mean, there's a part in there where he says, there's no question that this woman will consider the brain scientist to be more insightful and authoritative regarding her problem than the Bible. Why is that the case? Just because, I mean, so she talked, so she heard the word, she heard the gospel, and she also took antidepressant medications why can't she take the antidepressant medications and realize that the antidepressant medication was provided to her by God through common grace? And because of that, she can also trust the God of the gospel. Like, I mean, like, I mean, I don't understand why she can't, um, why, why both can't be true. Like, it seems like Ed Welch here is setting up another false dichotomy. Like, so, yeah. And then the other thing, like, he talks about here about uh, pornography. Like, like he, he says, and he says, okay, so this person takes a medication, and his, his pornographic indulgence ends, and he, he, he says, well, this person is going to trust his medication more than the, the preaching of the gospel and it's like again this is another false dichotomy again why does he have to um trust why does it have to be either or why can't it be both and i mean there is good evidence that i mean if you if you i mean one of the signs of like psychosis is you engage in risky behavior and one of the risky behavior is indulging in pornographic images. So if you're indulging in pornographic images, it is a good sign that you could have a mental illness. And if you have a mental illness, then maybe you do need a medication to um, fix the larger, the larger issue at hand. And then once you fix the larger issue at hand, then the pornography symptom will go away and then and it'll, it'll, all glory will go to God. So, I mean, it's just, it, I, I don't like how biblical counselors try and set up this false dichotomy. Like, it's like they're trying to pit the Bible against science or against psychology. And it, it doesn't have to necessarily be like that. And, um, but yeah, like, I, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. And it's very, it's very, it's very, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Never mind, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyways, 
the other thing he the other thing I disagree with. He said, Do you realize that anger, disobedience to parents, worry, drug abuse, stealing, and adultery are also being touted as brain problems rather than sin problems? Now this is the other false dichotomy. Like like this chapter, I might as well title this chapter the false dichotomy chapter. <laughs> like but like, yeah, like this like He's saying that these are either these problems that he lists up anger, disobedience to parents, worry, drug abuse, stealing, and adultery. He's saying that they're either sin or that they're brain problems, but they can't be both. Just because, like, there's good evidence that these things can, that mental illness can lead to these things. And does that excuse the behavior just because it's a mental illness? No. Like it, there's good evidence that it could, that it's a mental illness, but these people that do, that commit this stuff are still responsible for their behavior. So it is still considered a sin. It can, so both are true in the same sense at the same time. Like to suggest otherwise is to commit the fallacy of false dichotomy. And by the way, I know I use this term a lot. And for those of you that aren't aware of what false dichotomy is, it's a logical fallacy of pretty much where you um, posit two opposite claims and as if those are the only true claims, as if those are the only two possible claims available. But then the way to refute the false dichotomy is to posit a logical third claim. So, for instance, like, if you said, um, like, for instance, like, if you said true, true or false, that is a, that is a true dichotomy because, um, there, because there can only, something can only be true or false. That's a true dichotomy. Um, a false dichotomy would be something like, um, uh, like, a something, a, a tr a false dichotomy. I can't. I can't think of anything right now. But a a, a, a a false dichotomy is pretty much where you you posit like two, two claims, two opposite claims that p position themselves as truth claims, but you but then you only posit those two as if those and as if those are the only two possible answers. And there could be other answers, but you don't acknowledge those other answers. And the way to refute a false dichotomy is to posit a third logical um, possibility, possible answer. Um, and that right there will refute, the, will expose the dichotomy as a false dichotomy. So um, if you could think of an example of what I'm talking about, please post that in the comment section below. Like I, it's early in the morning and I, I I'm running off of very little sleep, so I'm kind of tired. My brain's not really working right now, so like, but I, I I just wanted to knock this video out. But yeah, um, yeah. So that's all I have to say about that. Like this video is actually um a lot shorter than um my usual videos but yeah like that's all i have to say because that's this chapter was actually pretty short because this is see the next chapter is chapter two but yeah and actually chapter two is called mind body questions and answers so i'll be doing that like probably i'll be making that video probably tomorrow or in the next couple days i'm not sure but yeah that's gonna be the next chapter um it's actually pretty good that chapter is gonna be longer so be prepared for a pretty long video for when I do what when I do the next chapter. Anyways, so if you stuck it through and watched this video, I thank you. I appreciate it. And let me know what you guys think about anything that I said in this video in the comment section below. Uh, I I do appreciate you watching this video, and I do appreciate you showing your love and support for my ministry and what I do. And um. If you if you like what you saw, please like this video and um, share this video with your friends and family and also um, and also subscribe to the channel as well. Um, also, um, if you find merit in this ministry, please 
um, feel free as you feel led to donate to this ministry to the Patreon account. Um, in the, I posted the link to the Patreon account in the description box below so you can check it out. Um, and if you do donate to the ministry, it'll, it'll give you access to exclusive content such as a daily devotional on mental health and faith issues. It'll also give you access to a private Discord community for peer support, an online fellowship with like-minded believers who struggle with mental illness, and other exclusive content. And yeah, like it is. And also check out my Twitter account, my Tumblr account, and also check out my Christian apologetics blogs. I'm right now going through Christopher Hitchens' book, God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything. So you can check those out. The links to all that will be in the description box below as well. All right, thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless you. And stay, and stay strong in the Lord. Bye.